I'd have found you sooner, I'd have never got married. I'd be in college right now. I understand what my husband was talking about now. He wants to come home to a peaceful place. I'm going through divorce number three, and I'm going to take a page out of your book. No reason to get married. Thank you. I was a, a pussy in my younger years, and uh, you got me late significantly listening to you, so thank you for that. I have a zero tolerance to drugs in my house, and they knew it, and they violated it, and they were out. Now, I have a zero tolerance to drugs in my house, too. Did you know that? Oh. <laughs> oh, I have zero tolerance to drugs in my house, unless you brought some for me. I listen to you all the time, Tom, and I agree with everything you say. Like, you just you spell it out, and girls need to listen up, too. You are not a misogynist. You are uh, one who speaks the truth, and I just, I totally want to be like you. Listening to your shows inspired me so much. I mean, I've already got my my bachelor's and master's. I'm going back to get to my PhD. I bought a 2,500 square foot house, and you know, now it's like my bullpen's filled with four or five women, and she's just still, you know, kicking herself in the rear. For the way you hook up with girls is by not talking to them, right? Right. That doesn't work, Tom. Come on. How do you know? No, oh, because I've been in the game for a long time. You've done this, and it didn't work. You know, it works if you're Tom Likens, Michael Jordan. If what you're I'm on the radio. What makes you think these women all know who I am? Oh, come on, Tom. The way you dress and the places you go to, just the way you present yourself and the clothing you wear. Yeah, you know I know. I, mean? but, I, I know. I am Mr. GQ. I come from a largely Sicilian family. So do you have a hairy? Do you have a hairy chest? No, I do not. I just had to check. I have half Irish on my dad's side, so that ah. clears all that problem up. So a freckled hairy chest. Last time I spoke to you was during Ask the Atheist, and I hope you're not disappointed in me, but I'm not an atheist anymore since I've been listening to you. You're my new god. I just wanted to let you know I think you're doing a public service. Well, I've been trying to service the public one listener at a time, as you may have heard. Mom destroyed me, all right? She would have the pot boiling on the stove and everything went into the boiling water. And then she tried tackling Greek food because we're Greek. She tried tackling horta. Now, do you know what horta is? No. This is like seaweed, all right? You could, if you could go to the Jersey Shore and munch on the stuff, wash it up on the beach and have a better meal. I did that. Her name was Jennifer. My mom, one thing that I hate that she did was cook a huge pot of beans that would last for months. I had so many beans. One day I had to really use the bathroom. Bathroom wasn't available. Long story short, I set it off in the house and shut down the entire house. Really? Sonic boom. Are you serious? And she could not understand how I did it, but it was all those damn beans. My mom wanted to let everybody know it wasn't her. So she was like, hey, you know, shouting out, that wasn't me, that was Shonda. Shonda, is that you again? Um, actually, Tom, no. I can I can do better than that one. Ah. <laughs> From Las Vegas, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Now tune into the motherf greatest. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We are the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 866. It's Friday, and here we are in Las Vegas. We are here with the Los Angeles Kings hockey team. And they are playing their annual Frozen Fury preseason game at the MGM Grand Hotel. And this is always such a great event. Last year we couldn't be here for this event because Gary Zabransky and I were in London 
waiting for the LA Kings to arrive in London for a big event they had there, which was to play the first NHL game ever played outside of North America. So uh, we were not here in Vegas last year for this event, but uh, we are back now. And um, it's it's fun because it ex- it's an excuse to go to Vegas. You're at the MGM Grand Hotel. Uh, the big event, uh, you know, is generally about uh, ten to fifteen thousand people, which you know that that MGM Grand Garden Arena is full every year, and uh, it's fantastic. It's a lot of fun. So uh, here we are with the Los Angeles Kings and the folks from AEG, and they have brought us here to Las Vegas to uh, hang out. And we got enough booze. We brought our own top shelf booze. So uh, we're not using it here on the air. I will tell you. You're going to say, what are you guys drinking? No, we're not actually. Uh, but tonight about 10 o'clock, I promised these guys a story. <laughs> but I, the, the booze has to be flowing. I can't tell this story unless I'm like peeking. So uh, a little later tonight, Friday night in Las Vegas, I'm going to tell these boys a story that, unfortunately, don't ask me what it is. I can't tell it to you. Would love to tell it to you, and maybe someday I'll tell it to you, but not tonight. That's all I'm going to say. Coming up later tonight. Now, so Gary and Dino are here, and my friend Barty, we're all here together. And uh, we have uh, Ian on the phones, and hopefully Ian can keep the cush down until 7 o'clock. Put the pipe down, boys. We know what you're up to. (laughs) Wait till 7. That's all I ask. 7 Pacific time. Art, I wasn't accusing you. This is an Ian thing. I wanted to mention it right up top. All right, here we are. It's Friday on the Tom Likas Show. It's wide open telephones. Anything goes, anything at all. Did you see? <laughs> you know, I've been talking about that goddamn Wamu. Woohoo, they're bankrupt. Did you see their stock price? Did you see uh, the federal government took over Washington Mutual last night? In case your paycheck is direct deposited over there, guess what? There is no WAMU anymore. Uh, did you see what the stockholders are getting in this deal? The uh, federal government came in and brokered the sale of WAMU to uh, J.P. Morgan Chase. And you know what the stockholders are getting? Woohoo! Nothing. <laughs> Woohoo! It's WAMU. Very exciting. And as I said, uh, they got that slogan because what they were doing is they were watching a graph of the tanking stock price of Washington Mutual. And uh, somebody said, woo-hoo, and they said, mm, it sounds like one last ad campaign for us before we go under. <laughs> woo-hoo. We're broke. Woo-hoo. Love that. Very exciting. By the way, speaking of Washington Mutual, I'm not making this up, okay? You can go check this out for yourself, okay? We were on the way to the airport today, and I passed the Washington Mutual branch at the corner of Beverly and Fairfax, according from tele- across the street in Television City. Number one, there was a line of people waiting outside, and I don't even know if WAMU was open for business today. I really don't know. But the best was in, in sky blue spray paint. Somebody painted on the, the, there's a, there's a door, an entry door on Fairfax. You can go look at this. Again, I'm not making it up. On the entry door on Fairfax Avenue, somebody took sky blue spray paint and painted this. Here's the message they painted. Good job. You suck. Ooh, ooh, the natives are restless over there at Wamu. Unbelievable. In fact, I was passing WAMU so early today, they didn't have time to put bed sheets up over the name of Washington Mutual with the Chase logo on it. They're all going to be Chase Banks now. 
And, uh, you know, my opinion when I see this happen is, you know, when you see the bed sheet with the name of the new bank, my opinion is that that's the next bank that's going under in five years, you know. The one that buys up all the other banks today. Remember when WAMU bought up uh, Great Western Bank? Some of the other banks in L.A.? Woo-hoo. Now they're all out of business. Woo-hoo. Where's your money? Did you try to get your money out of the bank today? Woo-hoo. That was hard. And what are those lines like today over at WAMU? Woo-hoo. I mean, was the ad agency on drugs when they came up with that ad campaign? Talk about fiddling while Rome burns. Here's a bank that the, the stock price has gone from like 40 to like, it had been like below $2 a share. And their ad campaign says, woo-hoo, that's their slogan. Are, are you kidding me, right? Now that they're out of business and it's not likely they'll be an advertiser, now I can say what I really think of them. Woo-hoo, you do suck. Absolutely. We can talk about that or anything else that's on your mind. You can call in and yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, we kick your ass the hell off the telephone. And Ian will do that cush or no cush. You know what I'm talking about? Tom. 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 Like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. All women want to do is break your heart and break your wallet. So hit it and quit it. Hit it and quit it. It's the Tom Likes Show. The Tom Likas Show from Las Vegas at 1-800-5800-TOM. Wide open telephone. Jose on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Hey, um, I was just listening to you right now talking about the, the WAMU. You know, how how people were pulling all their money out and, and all that deal. Yeah. And I, I, I personally have my account there at Washington Mutual. Which I like better than Wamu, but but um, what what uh what do you suggest? Like what what should what should someone like me do? Well, like, should I should I grab my money and just and take it somewhere else or no, write it out? No, because uh, Wamu was sold by the federal government to J.P. Morgan Chase, a big international banking concern, and uh, your money is all good, including anything over the hundred thousand dollar FDIC limit. All right, all right, all right. So the correct answer, much as I'm making fun of WAMU and they deserve it, well, they're not WAMU anymore. They're Chase. Chase Financial? Chase Bank. Oh, okay, okay. They are Chase Bank. All right. Form formerly known in New York years ago as Chase Manhattan Bank. Oh, great. But it's a real bank. Okay. Yeah, because I heard you and I actually, I, I drove to a Washington Mutual and just, you know, depending on your answer, I was going to run in there and grab my money. <laughs> no, I, you know, I would tell you if you should, because, um, you know, Wamu doesn't even exist anymore. They're not an advertiser. What do I care? Uh, but, uh, no, I mean, you're covered. Uh, you don't even need FDIC insurance. Uh, all of your deposits are covered by J.P. Morgan Chase. Oh, sounds good. Hey, so there you, you go. take me out with the bong hit? I certainly will. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Claudio on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi. Uh, can I speak to God, please? Speaking. Hi, God. Uh, just want to thank you for everything that you've given me in my life. Um, just where were you September eleventh? Just want to. September eleventh, two thousand one. Yes, September eleventh, two thousand one. What, most what of there. Well, I was in L.A. and most of that day I was on the air. Oh no! I I, I want to do the thing where you do the God voice. Oh well, I don't have my God button. We'll, could he, we'll find one. No, no, they're, they're, it isn't here today because I'm in Las Vegas. I don't have my regular button. Oh, I see. You're, in, you're on location or something. Yes, I'm here. There's a big uh, preseason hockey game tonight. Uh, hockey? You know, why, why do you like hockey? That's not even a cool sport, my friend. Hockey is a cool sport. L.A. Oh, just happens to have a team that hasn't been in the playoffs in a long time, but 15 years ago, the Kings went to the finals, and everybody in L.A. loved hockey. It's a distraction. You know what it is? Distraction. The, the, the big corporations are distracting us, man. With that and movies 
and you go to the bars and get drunk to distract us from how crap our lives are. Well, you see, we volunteer for that distraction. Now, if no. you don't want to be distracted, don't drink, don't watch movies, uh, don't go to hockey games. Uh, me, I, I prefer to forget how bad everything is. I see. Well, I, 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 I think see, most I people think out have, there agree with me. No, I don't think you have it that bad, Tom. I think everyone else has it bad. Well, you understand, though. Are we, uh, what are we doing over there? You, you deserve it, but I'm just saying everyone else. Yeah, I think something fell. <laughs> Um, but anyway, uh, no, no, it, it, the fact is that if things are bad for you, ultimately they're bad for me. It affects my business, too. Um, you know, things aren't really that bad for me either. I'm just, uh, I'm just saying, you know, for the Well, things are folks, bad for the average listener. Exactly. For the And they folks. are ultimately going to be bad for us. Well, yeah, it's going to trickle. It's going gonna, it's gonna to hit it, eventually. It, well, it's already hitting. Not that. I mean, I'm still taking that trip. I'm just saying. You're taking you know. trips? Where are you going? I'm thinking I'm going to go to Nassau. Where? Nassau, Bahamas. Oh, Nassau. Yeah. Well, I say Nassau. Nassau. Yeah. I've never heard anyone pronounce it that way. All right. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hi to Ernest on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Ernest. Hi, uh, it's a pleasure speaking to you. I'm sure it is. Hey, I made money off of uh, Wham You. Ram you. Did you uh, short it? Uh, I bought it last night at uh, about midnight, and I bought it on the open. I uh, got it at forty two oh two, and I closed it about forty eight something today. Forty eight cents? No, for, no, no, I'm sorry. No, wait a minute. I bought Chase. But, yeah, you didn't buy Wamu for forty eight dollars unless no. somebody was playing three card Monty with you. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> no, I, I'm sorry, I meant I'm, uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, but that was his on the news last night, and I honestly didn't think it was going to be that huge of a uh, of a deal on the market today, but people, you know... Well, here's why it's a deal, okay? It makes J.P. Morgan Chase the second biggest bank in the world after Bank of America. And, and the largest by deposits. I, actually, I think it's bigger than Bank of America. No, no. Bank of America is bigger, still. Uh, I mean, they may not be with all the dust settled, but right now, Bank of America is number one, and now J.P. Morgan becomes number two. It also gives uh, Chase Bank a foothold in the West, and it hasn't really had much of a footprint in the West. So it's a big deal, and being able to get the bank for $1.8 billion is a steal. Yes. Their earnings are going to be higher. Right now, their earnings will be lower, but uh, as you know, each quarter comes, their earnings will be higher and better. And uh, better per share. And I'm actually I'm outside of a Washington Mutual right now. I, I mean, I, like you said, everything's cool. You know, the name will change. Uh, but uh, you know, as an average consumer, I'm I'm fine. Yeah. No. I mean, I I wouldn't change anything. Don't change your direct deposit. Don't take any money out. By the way, it was in the paper today. It's no secret. If you read the L.A. Times, people have been taking their money out in droves. Yeah, and that made it worse. It made it worse, and in fact, it was the reason uh, the feds decided to seize Wamu. That's what they call a, a run of the bank. Well, but, uh, there you go. But if you're a stockholder in Wamu today, you got nothing. Yes, it, I think it closed at maybe uh, under $2. No, no, it didn't matter where it closed. The deal with the government tells the, steer the shareholders you get zero dollars and zero cents. Tom, you impress me every time you talk finance. That I do a lot of reading. What could I say? Thank you for that. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Here's Jose on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello. How you doing, Tom? Hello, Jose. Hi, this is uh, Jose over here from uh, Yucaiba, California. And yes, sir. Uh, I'm gonna tell you if I overdraft it, I watch the mutual. Should I pay him or just keep the money? Pay them. It's gonna be on your credit report because Wamu's not gonna miss a day of business. Uh, they're going to be uh, Chase Bank. And when they are Chase Bank, they're going to continue with everything exactly as it was. And that includes all debts like yours. No, oh, okay. By the way, are you that much of a stiff? Are you that much Are you that much of a slug? You know, and, um, you know I like everything you say. Some things you say is cool. Some of the things are not cool. But you're inspiring me to save money. And uh, i got money in my bank now. So thanks a lot. And can you take me out Kobe style? I certainly can, Jose. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. 
Yeah, it beats in my heart. Yeah, the air I breathe. She's so special to me. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Look at these calls coming in here. Let's say hello to Kevin on the Tom Like His Show. Hi, Tom. How are you doing? Doing great. Hey, I just wanted to give you a call and see if you heard anything about the Citizens Business Bank Arena in Ontario, California. Is that the one that's like a little mini staple center? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's opening up tomorrow, actually, and they got a minor league hockey team called the Ontario Rain that's going to be playing there. Really? Yeah. Does it rain often in Ontario? No, it doesn't. I think it's R E I G N. Oh, like King's Majesty Rain. Okay. Yeah, A E G owns the arena, so I guess they probably own the team. Also, I would imagine. Yeah, I'm assuming that's the reason. Yeah. So, yeah, it looks like it's going to be pretty cool. So, I just wanted to see if you heard anything about it. I heard about the arena. I heard that it is a 10,000 seat version of Staples Center. It looks just like it, apparently, at least on the inside. Yep. And, um, you know, Staples Center is one of the most uh, successful facilities of its kind in the world. So uh should be good for you guys. Yeah, it should be. Can you take me out with a uh, screen orgasm and toilet flush? Yes, yes, I can. Oh, oh, God. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Flush. Sorry about that. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Here comes Peter. Peter, you're on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Peter. How are you, man? I'm doing great. Uh, I have a question for you. I uh, I banked at Wamu, and uh, last Monday I went to the bank and took all my money because I had a feeling this crap was going to happen. And I just want to ask you where uh, where do you bank, man? Uh, well, it's no secret. I bank in a bank that uh, really wasn't all that involved in the subprime mess, uh, Wells Fargo. Now, uh, my opinion about Wells Fargo is it pays lousy interest like most big commercial banks, but it's one of the safer banks, in my opinion. Okay. Yeah, I was just wondering, Mike, because I'm going to go, now I'm going to go put my money, open an account up in Wells Fargo, man. Keep in mind also, though, that uh, most of my cash is not at Wells Fargo. Uh, most of my cash is at two of the uh, investment firms I do business with, uh, Vanguard Group and Fidelity Investments. Uh, all right, man. You get a money market account there. You get a checking account there, just like a bank. And uh, you can uh, you put your money in there. They're not insured by the FDIC, but no mutual fund company has allowed their money market fund to 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 go broke. They haven't. I, I, thanks, Tom. Uh, take me out with uh, tribal style, and uh, don't take me, bro. All right, here you go. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to um, Carlos on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Professor. Hello, Carlos. What's up? How's it going? Ah, oh, it's going great. Going great. Yeah, I just want to see what's up with the taco truck event. What's going on with that? The hardest thing we've had with the taco truck event has been finding a li- place we can legally park 50 to 100 taco trucks. Uh, we've been having a very hard time, and the places that have been suggested to us, many times the suggestions we've gotten are not from the owners of the property. They're from neighbors. Like people say, you guys ought to go to the Rose Bowl. Or they'll say, you guys ought to go to Dodger Stadium. But then when we call these places, uh, those are not the people who called in. And so nobody's offered us their private property. And that's, in order to have that taco truck rally that I want to have, we need uh, some private property somewhere in Los Angeles. And we haven't seen it yet. If you know anybody, have them call us, and we will do it there. For sure, for sure, I'll let you know. And uh, can you take me out with the orgasm and Mexican stuff? I certainly can, Carlos. Oh, Oh, God. Oh, yes, yes, yes. 
That's 1-800-5800-TOM. Oh, is that Ahmed? Ahmed, you're on hey, the Tom, Tom Lager Show. Doing? I'm okay. So, um, and, hey, listen, uh, I know Jake Corey just uh, brought out uh, Wamu last night. Now, I'm wondering if uh, Wamu still has the name Wamu, or did it just turn into J.P. Morgan? Well, it's not going to be either one. It's going to probably be Chase, Chase Bank. Really? Because J.P. Morgan is actually J.P. Morgan Chase. Oh, wow. Okay, so if I want to invest in stocks, um, what do you think is uh, best as far as banking goes right now? Or any kind of mortgage company? Well, I wouldn't recommend being in any of those right now. Really? Uh, yeah, because uh, I don't hear you as a long-term investor. I hear you as uh, somebody who's trying to make a few bucks. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, Wall Street is not a casino. You're not going to hear me recommending that you do that. Because uh, anything you invest in that you don't understand and are not committed to, it can go wrong. Okay, that definitely sounds like me. Uh, uh, I can tell. I can tell. <laughs> I mean, the way to invest right now, I, I'm not saying you should invest. People should invest. Uh, you should put in the minimum amount to open an account uh, for a particular mutual fund. And yeah. then you should put a certain small amount in every month. The same okay. amount of dollars every month. Okay, great. Thank you so much, man. Can you take me out of Bill O'Reilly style, please? Bill O'Reilly style? I certainly can. I can't do it. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live! F*** it! Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! Right. F***ing thing sucks! Factor for Kids, available at Amazon.com. You can have this man, Bill O'Reilly, raising your children. To have that uh, level of eruditeness and uh, dignity, sophistication, Bill O'Reilly as the moral compass for your children, and there you can have your kids sounding just like that in no time. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Just past half past the hour on the Tom Likas show. We're in Las Vegas. Here is Martin on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. What is going on there? Let's do a little radio show here, Martin. Hey, uh, are you going to be making a movie about your uh, life, like how you got started on the radio and so forth, though? Or is that true, or what? You know, I've had that conversation, and I don't know if I've ever mentioned it on the air. Maybe I did in passing. I've had that conversation with uh, more than one person. I've eaten many lunches and dinners, and there has been interest, if not a movie about my whole life, movies about a particular era in my radio career. That would be really great, though, if you did, though, like Howard Stern. Well, they're, they're, again, I've had, I've eaten lunch and dinner with more producers and, uh, taken meetings with more film studios. And I'll do it again. I'll keep doing it until, uh, you know, we come up with something that uh, I think people would enjoy. You know, it has to be something not just that the general public would enjoy, but my listeners have to like it as well. And, um, I don't want to belittle my listeners by making something that's pussified. Hey, creep up the uh, great work, and uh, can you take me out Michael Vick style? Michael Vick style. Yes, I can. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Vince on the Tom Likas show. Hey, Tom, how you doing? Great. Hey, listen, I was just wondering, with the current economic conditions that exist and the unpredictability for the future, uh, what are you doing with your investments? Like, what are your investments, and have you made any drastic changes recently due to the unpredictability? Well, I, I've done two things. Uh, one is I took about a third of my investments back last winter and invested them in a piece of real estate. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad I did, because God only knows how much those investments would have gone down had I not sold. On top of that, uh, the remaining two-thirds I have continued to augment with monthly investments using dollar cost averaging. The same amount each month in each fund. And it's all mutual funds. I don't own any individual stocks at this point. But aren't you concerned that the mutual funds could uh, go down significantly similar to, similar to stocks? They've gone down, but uh, you have to remember that stocks are the only thing that people don't buy when they're on sale. And the difference between rich people and poor people 
is that poor people see the stock market going through the roof and they say, I want in. Ooh, Apple is $175 a share. Sign me up. But if Apple drops to $86 a share, they go, I don't want to buy a stock that's dropping. Uh, the reality is rich people buy when you're selling and they sell when you're buying. Warren Buffett. Yeah, I know what you mean. How about I, me? I no, no, me. <laughs> but, and and I'm, Warren I'm Buffett. Referring to Warren, I'm referring to Warren Buffett's no, I understand that, of, but I, I, I'm the rich guy you know who is continuing to invest as the market goes down. Right. I made the similarity between you and Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett, uh, Warren Buffett invested $5 billion in Goldman Sachs the other day. $5 billion. This right. is the time that you, you have to have an iron stomach and you have to not be retiring in a year or two. Right, but I heard he made an instant profit of about seven hundred and fifty, eight hundred million in one day on Warren, paper. Warren Buffett knows more than I and more than you. And by the way, no matter what he made on paper, here's one thing I know about Warren Buffett: he didn't flip that stock, he didn't sell it, he still owns it. Yeah, I think that a lot of us uh, guys like me got a little scared about a week ago. I know I did. I took some money out of my mutual fund because I thought that the whole thing would collapse. This and, is exactly uh, the wrong time to do that. Yeah. It's the time to do the exact opposite. Leave it if, alone, right? If you want to make money. Right. But you said dollar cost averaging. I'm not sure I quite understand that. That's not, that's something more than just leaving your your money alone in a mutual fund, right? Um. Well, it, it, well, it, it is leaving your money in and adding to the investment. For example, what it is is uh, let's say you're putting a hundred dollars a month in a given mutual fund. Well, it, uh, let's say it was $10 a share the last time you put in $100. If it goes up to $11 a share, next month you'll only buy nine shares. So when the price goes up, you buy less. If the price drops to $9 a share, you'll get 11 shares. So you buy more when the price goes down and less when the price goes up. Oh, I it is a don't. recognized theory of investing recommended by some of the great economists. Um, it uh, takes some of the risk out of investing. Not all of it. it. takes some of the risk. It takes some of the edge off. It also takes some of the edge out of having outsized profits when the market is going way up. Mm -hmm. But uh, you do you, you 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 continue going up rather than down generally with dollar cost averaging. That's a pretty simple and straightforward way to just uh, uh, invest. I mean, continue to put the money in and don't worry so much about the short term, right? Right. If you're in for the long term, this is just a bump of the road. And uh, you're going to be able to get more shares for less money right now. Right, right. All right so Tom, you, this is not the time to be backing out. By the way, uh, don't take my word for it. Uh, Google the phrase dollar cost averaging and read about it. I'll tell you what I did, Tom. Last year I... Uh, uh, about six months ago, I bought a piece of property in Pasadena. Um, I'm a dentist, and I'm open up, opening up my second location. And I didn't care much uh, if the market was going down. I went ahead and did that. So uh, hopefully, hopefully that's a good decision. Hopefully so. Good luck to you, Vince, and uh, I thank you very much for the call. Wide open telephones on this Friday on the Tom Likas Show. Anything goes. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Tom. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like you. Definitely don't like you. It's the Tom Likas Show. Coming to you from Las Vegas at one 800 5800 tom Wide open telephone. Call in and say hello to our, our Plan B screener, Ian. Ian is on the case right now, screening out hundreds and hundreds of lousy phone calls. Oh, give me your best shot. Go ahead. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Danny. On the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Danny. Hello, Tom. How's it going, Danny? I was doing good. It could be better. It could be off work, but hey, I'm still here. Um, I want to know what you think about the Dodgers. How do you think Manram is going to do this, uh, this postseason? Well, uh, first of all, we don't even know who the Dodgers are going to play in the playoffs. Uh, and we will not know that probably until the weekend is out. 
Right, right. So, uh, for example, right now the New York Mets and the Milwaukee Brewers are tied for the wild card position. And you know right. the way it works in baseball. Um, if the, the the team that wins the division, if the wild card team is in that division, they don't play each other. They play one of the other divisions. Okay, separate, right. So if Milwaukee is the wild card team, the Dodgers will play the Chicago Cubs. If the Mets are the wild card team, the Dodgers will play the Phillies. Right. right, does, that right. Make all, that, does that all make sense? That makes sense. Uh, but, so uh, so that. Man, Rams, you know, I'm sorry. Well, well, that first you have to know that before you can predict how they're going to do. That's true. And, that's true. And let's face it, the Dodgers have the worst record of any team that's won a division. All six divisions, they have the worst record. Well, yeah, well, the NL West has been the, the worst division for the last, I don't know, how many years? Well, it was certainly the worst. Well, of course, the NL West uh, provided you with the World Series uh, participant for the National League last year. Right. Most people have forgotten that already, but it's the Colorado Rockies played the World Series last year. Right, right. So, um, uh, the thing about the, the, you know, the first uh, layer of playoffs in the major leagues is best three out of five. And those short series are very unpredictable. That can be good or bad. But the Chicago Cubs have, you know, the big name pitching. Yeah, they do. And in a short series, uh, they could do very well. The Dodgers have some good pitching, but Clayton Kershaw is inexperienced. Greg Maddox never pitches well after September 1st. <laughs> uh, Chad Billingsley has never played in the postseason. No. All right. And Hiroki Kuroda played in the playoffs. Yeah. In Japan. <laughs> okay. So, you know, uh, Derek Lowe is the only Dodger pitcher with legitimate playoff and World Series experience. Yeah, he, he is. Unless you count Scott Proctor, the uh, the uh, middle reliever, who played for the Yankees. He played for Joe Torre in New York. Right, right. So, all right, Tom, I just wanted to just bug you for a minute or two. Can you take me out with the bong rip and a gracias? I certainly can. Gracias. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. The Tom Likas Show with wide open telephones coming to you from Las Vegas. Here's Ernie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, hey Ernie. <laughs> hey Tom, how's it going? It's going great. Awesome. Um, check it out. On um, my younger days, I screwed up my credit horribly, and now that I'm older, I'm twenty three. I paid back all the collections, and I just invested in a property that I couldn't put it under my own name. Because my credit was so horrible, so I borrowed my buddy's um, credit, and I'm making payments on the property. But I'm, I'm not too trust, you know, trustworthy that, you know, later down the line he might screw me, saying that the property's his, even though I've been making the payments out of my check. That could happen. I know. So I'm like in a big hurry trying to boost my credit score. I mean, everybody's paid, but you know, collection companies are telling me it'll be seven years before anything's off my record. Why don't you pay all your bills instead of being a deadbeat? No, that was when I was 18. I'm 23 now. But do you still owe money to people? No, nobody. So you owe zero debt to anyone? You don't even have any current credit card balances, nothing? I have my, my monthly credit card because I'm a big rig driver, so I pay it off every month. All right, you pay it in full. Now, have you checked your FICO score? No, I have, and it's remained the same. It hasn't really boosted up that much. All right, and how many credit cards do you have? Currently, I have five open, and I've been trying to open more because well, my dad's buddy, he's a real estate investor, and he told me just try to open more accounts, try to get more credit, use the minimum, use at least 10% on the credit card, and then pay it off full. In the, uh, well, you know, the that's a, you know, that's a dangerous game to play, uh, and that could be the reason that your FICO score is not going up, because you've got so much available credit. Maybe. So... What would you suggest? What would you do? Um, I would first of all, I would not have bought a piece of property uh, that's not my own name. I would never do that, never. Yeah. And if you haven't run that past an attorney, it's not too late. I would if I were you. See okay. if there's some way you can uh, take back the property, or you can now that now that the property uh, now the uh, the transaction was completed. Maybe there's some way that you can then have them transfer it to you. What about the title? Just having the title under my name again. Talk to an attorney. I'm not an attorney. All right. You got but it. I, 
that would be my recommendation to you. And as far as your credit is concerned, pay your bills. I would, uh, you know, just keep it to two or three basic credit cards. You know, like MasterCard, Visa, American Express, done. Don't be piling up a bunch of credit cards. I don't think that's good advice. Because if your credit's been lousy, they don't want to see that you've got seven, eight, nine open credit cards. I don't think so. All right. Well, I think that concludes my question. And um, can you take me out Kobe style plus Mexican? I certainly can, Ernie. Here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Wide open telephones. Here comes Robert on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Godfather. Hello, Robert. Godfather, I have a question for you. Yes. What a request. Could you uh, eliminate the Lacey Peterson takeout with uh, and replace it with a Scott Peterson in jail takeout? I think that would increase uh, maybe your. Your chances of getting back on the air up there in Central California, because I remember you saying that some people didn't really think that was tasteful. And uh, I'm just trying to increase your uh, your message. Trying you know, to advise me here, yes, yes. Well, the thing is, uh, we were off most of the stations in Central California uh, before that uh, uh, Lazy Peterson trial ever came up. Oh, I see. Okay, so that's why you're the Godfather. You always got the answers, my man. You bet I have. <laughs> I love you, Tom. Robert, thank you very much for the call. I appreciate it. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. And if you want to hear our show streaming live, go to our website, BlowMeUpTom.com. Click on the Listen Live button and you'll be listening live. The Tom Likas Show.